Hey, while you're in the first five seconds of the video, go ahead, like, and subscribe. Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right, I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. All right, how's everybody doing? My name is Simakaya. I'm with Israel United in Christ, and we're doing a presentation today on black history in the Bible. How many of y'all believe in the Bible? Okay, everybody pretty much believe it. How, how many of y'all have ever heard that we were the Israelites according to the Bible? Okay, so that's the purpose. That's why we are here today. We're going to show you how our history correlates with the Bible and shows us that we are the Israelites that the Bible speaks of. So uh, it's the history of Israel according to Deuteronomy 28. Uh, first, first off, we're going to start off with our mission statement. Israel United in Christ was founded in 2003. Our goal is to change the hearts and minds of our people. Blacks and Hispanics must learn the truth that they are the biblical 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Disobedience to God's laws has been the root of all our troubles. Blacks and Hispanics everywhere suffer the same racial, social, and economic problems worldwide. Voting has not helped us. Christian churches have failed us. It's time for a change. In these last days, we must give the Bible's medicine to sick people. Then and then, then and then only will things begin to change. So the only way that we're going to bring about change in our communities, change the, the murder rate, change the single parent households, the only way we're going to change that is when we return to the Bible. And that's actually, when, we say, when I say return to the Bible, and when I say return to the Bible, I mean return to keeping God's commandments. One of the questions that we may often ask ourselves is, why are, why are the things that go on in our community so prevalent in our community? Why are we the most poverty stricken? Why has violence plagued our communities across the world? Not just in Chicago, but violence plagues our community. Single parent households plagues our community. Baby daddy, baby mama, all of these things plague our community. Violence, a shortage of jobs. It's, it always appears that we get the short end of the stick, so to say. So the question is, why is it? And then once we discover why, what's the solution to fix it? So that's what we're going to go into today. Read that, Deuteronomy 28, 15. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, and verse 15. But it shall come to pass. So the Bible says, so the book of Deuteronomy was written by Moses to the children of Israel thousands of years ago. So now he's telling them, he said, but it shall come to pass, meaning he's telling them something that's going to happen in the future. Read on. If thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So now he says, if you will not hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. Hearken means to listen attentively. Read. To observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. So he's telling them, if you, if you do not listen to the commandments that I'm telling you this day, read. That all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. What is a curse? Say it again. Put some words, good or bad? Bad. So a curse would be something bad, right? So Moses is saying, just like, just like, a, um, just like a father with his children, a mother with her children, if you tell your child to go clean their room, and you, you go to work, come home, and they room worse than what it was when you told them. What's going to happen? They're going to get chastised. So that's what we're reading right here. The God, the Moses, Moses told the Israelite, he gave them a message from the Most High God. If you don't keep the commandments, if you don't do, follow my instructions, bad things are going to happen to you. Um, read on. Verse 16, curse shalt thou be in the city. So I got my tablet right now until we get the uh, slides up. But this is 
a visual of it. It says, cursed shalt thou be in the city. We said cursed. A curse is a bad thing. So if a curse is a bad thing, if you cursed in the city, what's going on to this nation of people in the cities? Bad things, right? How many of y'all are familiar with Tulsa, Oklahoma? With the uh, black, uh, what is it, Black Wall Street? What happened at that time? What was that? My brother in the back, what, what happened then? You know, you know the city, okay. So y'all y'all familiar with the Tulsa, Oklahoma race riot where Black Wall Street was bombed? So basically it's, a, it's called the Tulsa, Oklahoma massacre of 1921. So basically it was a time where we were collectively, where we had our own community, we had our own businesses, our own banks, and all of that. We were actually working together and thriving in the community. But what happened, the end of it, guess what the end of that, that was? It got bombed. It's the Roaring Twenties. The country is flourishing. Some African-American communities are prospering, like the residents of Greenwood in Tulsa, Oklahoma. A remarkable Baptist pastor named Solomon Sir Jones is the pioneering filmmaker. His footage was lost for more than 50 years. Jones captures the bustling life of Greenwood, which could be any American small town. But Tulsa's whites don't like what they see. In May 1921, after a black man is accused of assaulting a white woman, a white mob rampages through the city. For a night and a day, they loot and burn Greenwood. A Fox News crew captures the only surviving footage. It is the bloodiest racial massacre in American history. It got destroyed. Why? Because um, a, a Caucasian woman lied and said that a young man, so you're familiar with it. And off that, all hell broke loose after that, and they destroyed everything we had. What about um, anybody, any of y'all ever heard of Lake Lanier? Are we up yet? No. Lake Lanier. It's a, a it's a town that was formerly known as Oscarville, Georgia. It was another black community that we had, thriving, had our own business. And what happened? The same exact thing. It got destroyed, and they made it into a pond. They made it into a, a lake. And this goes over the course of our history. We in Chicago. Are we up? All right, go to that. Uh, what's that? Say it again. That's what happened. And it's more things where all of these, even today, you look at, look at the city of Chicago. What's Chicago known for? They call Chicago Chirac. Chirac. And right now, they highlight Chicago. Chicago's not the most violent city in America. Chicago's not even the top 10 right now. But Chicago is coined as if it's the most violent. And it is violent here. We're not saying it is not. But why is it that in our communities, even Chicago, if you look at Chicago, right now we own the south side, where you have the violence, west side, violence. If you go up north in the other neighborhoods, is how does it look? When you go to Chinatown, does Chinatown look like where we at? No, it don't. It looks better. When you go up north, you go to the Gold Coast, you go to various spots, it looks better, right? But when you go through our communities, houses are boarded up. You got a bunch of abandoned houses. We killing each other. Low jobs. They closing down communities. They, they building up the community and pushing us out. That's what you call being cursed in the city. That's a city where bad. And if you go to Detroit, you go to um, uh, Memphis, you go to wherever you go, 
but we, our neighborhoods, it's a complete different, you, you, you roll through our neighborhoods, it's trash everywhere. In Gary, Indiana, where houses are boarded up, a house get boarded up, and they stay abandoned for years and deteriorate and fall through, get an X put on it. But then you don't, you, when you transition to the north side or the north suburbs, you transition out of our neighborhood and it does, you don't see that. You don't see that no more. You don't see that. We read not the Bible, as you see up here. Can y'all see that? Yeah. We turn it a little bit. So this is, this is it says, curse shalt thou be in the city. The blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, we're seeing that. Because I mentioned the, the Native Americans. Whose land was this? It was ours. It was the Native Americans. But what happened to this land More when the conquistadors America. when the conquistadors came over here? North America, which one? Indians. The Indians. Yeah. What happened to this land? Because the Indians was the so-called Indians as we know them today. They were already here, right? Yeah. But what happened to them? Where are they living at right now? They living on reservations. Yeah. Ain't that a curse? Yeah. You you own your land that you inhabited, but now you're, on, you're, 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 you're uh, secluded to a reservation. And, and many of us may not know the specifics, but they go through the same things we go through. They got alcoholics, they, where they go through various levels of alcoholism. They got gangs where they, they killing each other. All of those things are happening. Say it again. Same thing we got. Same exact thing. So when you examine this, the Bible said, read that again in 16. Verse 16, curse shalt thou be in the city. Because remember in verse 15, it said, it shall come to pass if you break the commandments that these curses are going to happen to you. Then it says, curse shalt thou be in the city. Who's cursed in the city today? We are. We are. Read on. And cursed shalt thou be in the field. Go to the next slide. So now it says, curse shalt thou be in the field. Who was in the field? What we were doing in the fields? Picking cotton. Picking cotton. These are historical facts. Y'all already know these things. Right, right. But now what we're doing is connecting it to the Bible. Because all our lives, many of how many of y'all grew up, grew up going to church or grew up knowing about reading the reading the Bible or knowing about the Bible? Have y'all how many of y'all have ever heard that we were the Israelites? That the Bible, okay, a couple of y'all, that's good. But what we're showing is this is what proves. This is actually what proves that we are the Israelites. Because we read and it said, Cursed shalt thou be in the city, and cursed shalt thou be in the field. We wasn't picking cotton and picking sugar cane and tobacco. We wasn't doing those things just so somebody's had a bright, a bright, a bright business idea. We was doing those things because these are the curse, these are the punishments or the disciplines that we are suffering because we broke God's commandments. We broke God's rules. Go to the next slide. <clears throat> read on. Verse 17. Curse shall be thy basket and thy store. Does anybody have any idea what this was going to? It says, curse shall be thy basket and thy store. Store. You said store? Like what? Like a... That's, that's, that's kind of what it's going into. It's curse shall be thy basket and thy store. It's going into our businesses. So what is it, what, when you have a business, what is that business supposed to do for the community? It's supposed to flourish. It's supposed to, when you, when we have business, when you do, like when we did have a black Wall Street, it said the black dollar circulated in our community. So when we have businesses, that our dollar is supposed to stay within our communities to help build up the community. Because if we had our own businesses in our own community, you think we would have abandoned houses all over the place? Nope. But what we do, we would rather go and spend our money at Walmart, at Jewels. But when our brother opened up, a, when our brother open up a business and do things, we wouldn't go support them. It's a reason for that. A reason for what? For why we don't shop with our own people. Why, why, what's that reason? We have to go get our product from the white man. Right. You, the that's prices that. that they charge us make us have to charge our people more. Right. Mm-hmm. You're exactly right. And we're going to cover that too. Why is that? Because he... he and the thing, why is it set up like that? So we're going to jump up. Go to 48. 
jump up to verse 48. So we're going to jump up and we're going to come back to this. But we're talking about our businesses, and you brought out a good point. It's made like that because, okay, when you go to Walmart, it's a little cheaper. But if my, but my brother opened up a shop, he got to charge higher prices because when he buy it, he buy it low. But for him to make a profit, he got to charge a little bit more. So in our mind, we like, you know what? My brother got it for 10 but shoot, I can go to Walmart and get it for 7 I'm going to say that $3. When actually, even that right there is bad thinking because you should want to spend more and support your brother because your brother is going to help build up the community back. But we have lost sight of that. We have lost sight of actually working together as a people. Yeah, we We've been divided. Chance. We don't even give ourselves a chance to see if they're going to build the community. We don't see if right. they're going to make a mistake and say right. and do wrong. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We don't give them a chance. But uh, read that real quick. Verse 48, because this what, what you just said, this is exactly what this scripture is talking about. Read. Verse 48. Therefore, <clears throat> shalt thou serve thine enemies. Start at verse 46. Verse 46. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder. So that they is talking about the curses, the curses, the bad things that's going to happen to us for breaking God's rules. Read. It and, said, that, it said it's going to be upon, sorry. It says it's going to be upon us for a sign and for a wonder. What is the purpose of a sign? To give us forewarning. To give us forewarning. What else does a sign do? Like, if you, like the, on the front of this building, I think it's uh, Rise. What's the name of it? Identify. Identify. It identifies. So we on um, Indiana. When I turned on Indiana, I knew I was on Indiana because of the street. So it's, it identifies, like you said. So now read that again. And they... <clears throat> shall be upon thee for a sign. So it says they. The curses are going to be upon the Israelites for a sign. Read. And for a wonder. And for a wonder. What's a wonder? That's like an amazement. When, when, when people drive through our neighborhoods, when, the other, when they look at us, even when we look at our, the, some of the things that our people do, we're like, why? Like, why, why, why are your pants down to your knees? <laughs> Those are things that's a wonder. We wonder why that's your brother that looked just like you, but you, you, you wouldn't hesitate to shoot him down in the street over some money or over a woman or over a car, over a street corner. That's a wonder. Read. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. So what we did, what we failed to realize and what we don't know net today this world was made for us. This world was made for us. But we lost sight of that. That's why we fighting over street corners and blocks. And we killing our brothers. Right. We fighting over a block. This is my block. No. Because as soon as you shoot your brother for the block that you don't own, now you're going to be in jail for a block that you don't own, that you're never going to own. Read on. Therefore, Shalt thou serve thine enemies? So now it says, therefore, you're going to serve your enemy, read. Which the Lord shall send against thee. That the Lord going to send against you. It's the same thing what he said in verse 15. If you don't keep the commandments, you're going to be cursed. So now you're going to serve your enemies, read. In hunger. In hunger. <clears throat> Pull up that next slide. So in hunger. How do we get, like, we, like the example? Going to, we go to Walmart versus going to our brother. Our brother might open up a, 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 a pantry or a store that we can go and get our bread, our water. But instead of going to our brother, we're going to go to our enemy. We're going to go to our enemy and get it because, why? It's cheaper. That's us serving our enemies. Read. And in thirst. And in thirst. If we want to get something, if we want to get something to eat, you got, that's why you got SNAP, you got SNAP benefits, food stamps, uh, government cheese, just going back a little bit. You got, if we want to get something to drink, we got to go to our enemy to get to something to drink. And even the brother that opened up his shop, well, he got to get his supplies from. He got to go to the Caucasian. He got to go and get it from somebody else. And because he getting it at a high price, he got to, he got to, he got to charge high. And then what, and the, the, the domino effect of that is, okay, ain't nobody coming to support me, so now I got to close shop. My business is going back. That's a curse. Nothing that we do prospers. But it's because we, we turned away from God's laws. We turned away from the Bible. And it's not, 
just knowing the Bible and saying the blood of Jesus. It's no applying what the Bible tells us to do. Like men, we're supposed to have our beard. And these are small basic things, but men, we're supposed to have a beard on our face. We grow a beard, it distinguishes us. When we grow our beard, it distinguishes a, a boy from a man. So our beard is a badge, it's a badge of manly dignity. So it, 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 um, when we start growing a beard, I don't know if y'all can remember, the, when you start growing a beard when you was 14, 15, 16, when, they, when you had that first string, you was excited. But then when you got old enough to get a job, they said, no, nah, you got to be clean shaven. So then you start clean shaving your beard and you became proud to shave off your beard. That goes against God's laws. And that's a, that's, a, that's a more of a, as we would consider in our minds, that's a smaller law, but it's still something that God told us to do. And we didn't do it. Right, but it all circles back to why are we even in a predicament to have not to, to be, um, why are we, how are we even, even get in the position to be in this state? Because you look around, there's no secret that we are a, a, a more excellent people. Because even in our struggle, we excel in everything that we put our mind to. So that, that right there is an indication that we, we are better than everybody else. God didn't create all men equal. Uh, read on. And in nakedness. And in nakedness, the clothes that we got on our back. We have to go to our enemy to get it. Even if, you, even if like these different uh, clothing companies, uh, you have food. What's some newer clothes, clothing lines? Huh? A Miri? That's black on? Like some newer black on. I know we got, what I remember is. Who? Yeezy. Uh, what I know, I'm going to speak what I know. Uh, the ones that come on around. FUBU. Um, what's some other ones? Jabot, that's, nah, that ain't, that ain't, nah, that ain't, nah, that ain't, nah, that ain't, that nah. FUBU, Sean John, Rockaway, those, Fat Farm, those are, um, Sean Carter, those are like black owned clothing companies, but they not in the, they not the ones putting, moving the fabric together to actually do it. All they doing is slapping a logo on the shirt and selling it. So we still, no matter how you slice it, whether you got your own business, whatever, we have to go. T- say it again. They'll never give us distribution. Exactly. And that's this right here. Read it again. That's, and that's, that's right on point. Read it again. And in thirst. And in nakedness. And in nakedness. We're serving our enemies to put the clothes on our back. We're serving our enemies to get the food. We're serving our enemies to get water. Because water, water comes out of the earth. It comes out of the sky. But we got to pay for it. If you got a house, you got to pay a water bill. And you don't, wait, you don't pay that water bill, they cutting it off. But the thing is, they, they master the system. The only, way, the only way they were able to master the system, we gave it to them by, breaking it, by, we, by us breaking God's commandments. We gave it to them. Here, take it. Read on. And in want of all things. Everything we want. Go to the next slide. Everything we want or need, we got to go to our enemies. When we have a baby, what we got to get? Go to the hospital. We got to go to the hospital. So our health care. We got to get a social security number. Birth certificate. If you want to get a house, where you got to go? To the bank to get a loan. Who owned the bank? All of, the, all of those things are going on because we turned our back on God's laws. Uh, read on. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. And it says, and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. Who had yokes of iron on their neck? Uh, Go to the next, is it on the next slide? These yokes of iron. These are things that actually happen. We can go back in our history and see these things. We had yokes of iron, but then a lot of times what, what would happen, today we don't have yokes of iron on our neck. So a lot of people would say, I ain't no slave, I'm free. Read on. Until right. He Look, have, listen to this. Until he have destroyed thee. So why are those chains off our neck today? Because we've been destroyed as a people. They they done took our man. We've been destroyed. 
we no longer know that we are the Israelites. We no longer know that we are God's chosen people. What is it? So, read it again. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. So at one point in time, we had yokes of iron on our neck. But now, read. Until. Until. So those yokes of iron remained on our neck. We stayed, we stayed shackled in chains and iron until, read. He have destroyed thee. He completely destroyed us. So he, he, put, he took the spirit out of us to want to run away. He took the spirit out of us to want to, 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 to separate from the system, so to say. So now we don't have those jokes of iron. Just like a dog, when you got that invisible force field for a dog, they, gonna go, they go to that force field and they get shocked. What happened to us in slavery? What was going on? When the slave tried to run away, what happened to him? They, but they they cut his foot off, but when, or they beat him. But what did they do when they beat him? Did they beat him in a in a in a room by itself? They beat him. <clears throat> right. Right. And the and the ones that did run away, who were they? They were the they were the strong ones. They were the strong ones. So they beat down the strong ones in front of everybody. It broke the spirit of everybody else. And it's like, well, you know what? I ain't running because. I don't want that to happen to me. So that's what that is. All of that. That's the, when you look at the uh, it's a, a letter called the Willie Lynch letter that de detailed how they split us, the, they divided us from the old from the young, the light skinned from the dark skinned, the woman against the man. They reversed all, they reversed everything. That's why today now, that's why there's so many single parent households where the woman is pretty much running the house. When the, the natural order of things is that the man run the house. Get that in 1 Corinthians 11 real quick. That reminds me of when I used to drive <clears throat> downtown. And um, I used to look at all of the cars uh -huh. going by. And I'm like, God damn, why don't I see no dudes in these cars? Number of females going to work. Mm -hmm. Take the jobs away from the man. Yep. Now he ends up in jail because nine times out of ten he's going to do something. Right. You take the man out the household. Mm -hmm. That's that's what with the when we go back to when we circle back to the food stamps. Make sure they get a section eight and for the women. They, they get a, the man can't be in the house. And the man can't be in the house. They did all of that to change. They turned everything upside down. Mm -hmm. But right now, like just us here speaking to you all, us changing and getting ourselves right, everything is being turned right side up. Mm -hmm. Because now we're under we come into the understanding that wait a minute, we are the Israelites. Wait a minute, we supposed to be ruling this earth. That's where the illuminating comes from. We're supposed to be enlightened. The information is supposed to be revealed. Mm -hmm. And that's what's that's happening right now. He did what he did. Say it again. That's why Kyrie did what he did in reference to backing off of some of the companies that he was with. It wasn't that they got rid of him, he got rid of them. Mm -hmm. Because he's making moves. He's supposed to have a black owned company doing his gym shit. Uh huh. You know what I mean? He's right. starting to stay focused on that, I believe. I even think Kanye is even on that. You know what I mean? Right. He got rid of all of that. But the, just think about it. You got that? Read it real quick. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So the authority over Christ is God. No, no, no. I'm jumping ahead. Read it again. Read it again. I'm jumping ahead. Read it again. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So our head as the men is Christ. We answer directly to Christ. Read. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of the woman is the man, meaning the head, the man is the head of the household. Read. And the head of Christ is God. And the head of Christ is God. So it's Christ. I mean, it's God, Christ, man, then the woman. So the man dictates the direction that the house is supposed to go in. All too often now, we got big mama, where it's the, it's the mother that's running the household. But all those things happen through slavery. Um, what came to mind? Genesis 18 with Abraham. Because when we, when we examine the Bible, the man gave the direction for the house. The man gave the vision for the house. Now we grow up where, where you got men going to their grandma to get these things when it's supposed to be the it's, when it's supposed to be the man read the book of genesis chapter 18 and verse 18 
seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation. So this is Abraham, my one of our forefathers. They said he's going to come a great and mighty nation. Read. And all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Uh -huh. For I know him that he will command his children and his household after him. So this is going right into what we just read in 1 Corinthians. He said and he, that he will command his household after him. So the man is the one that leads the house and, and, and um, directs the house in the direction it's supposed to go in. But we have we departed far from that. And it's, it's, it's as a result of slavery. It all, goes, it all goes back to why did these things happen to us? Because we broke God's commandments. But now we're supposed to go back. Damn, go ahead. That goes back to make me think about when Kanye said slavery was a choice. When I first heard that, it's like a choice. It ain't no choice. But when you really think about it, it was a choice. go to Deuteronomy chapter 30. When you go, when you think about it, because as we read through the Bible, you either do you do this and I'm gonna bless you, right. or you do this and I'm gonna curse you. So, in actuality, yeah, we did choose slavery because these things was laid out plainly for before us. If you break my commandments, I'm gonna send you into slavery. Now, here's the crazy <clears throat> part: I've always heard Christians say that God would never curse. He won't curse us. That's what I heard. Read that. The book of 31. 30, um, read one. Read one. One through three, I think. Verse one. And it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee. Uh-huh. The blessing and the curse. Wait, it said what? <laughs> the blessing and the curse. That let us know right there that God does, he does curse. Yeah. Because it's, it said it right there. It says, when, th when these things have come upon you, meaning it's going to happen. Read. That's crazy. Which I have set before thee. See, he said, which I have set before you, meaning he set before us the blessing and the curse. And the curse. Read. And thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations, whither the Lord thy God have driven thee. So that's what we're going through today. Because across the world, we, we're starting to come back and realize and understand that we, the word of God is going out through this earth that we are the Israelites and we, it's, it's spreading like wildfire. So now we're calling these things to mind like, wait a minute, that Bible is talking about me. Wait a minute, Moses was a black man? Wait a minute, Solomon was black? Wait, Christ was black? Wait a minute. All of these things are going on right now and we're calling these things to mind. Jump it to the funny, end. It's funny you say that about Christ being black because all this time we've been under the assumption that Christ was white, right? Yep. That gave them the power to be able to walk through our neighborhoods and nobody touched mm -hmm. them. Exactly. Because we like, hey, don't touch God. Don't, no, nah, that's God. Don't touch God. But then my, your, my brother walked down the same street. That, that sign that you was talking about, he, mm -hmm. it, that was a sign. Yeah. But the same, the, 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 just that example. You could be in, uh, you could be in Englewood and white guy jogging, no they problems. Jogging, no one's going to get touched. But your op that look just like you run through and you shooting them down, shooting them down cold. That's, that just shows we, we destroyed as a people. But that's why this truth is coming out and we're returning. But read that uh, where it says, uh, where, he did, where he said, it's at the end of 30. Okay, verse 19. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you uh -huh. that I have set before you life and death. So, God, let us know. I set before you life and death. Read. Blessing and cursing. Blessing and cursing. Read. Therefore, choose life. And, but he, and he told us, he warned us, choose life. Yeah, right. Read. That both thou and thy seed may live. That thou and they, thy seed may live. Right to now today, we're not living. We actually did. Yeah. We wow. did because we disconnected from our God. Right. Read. And that's, the, that's what he's talking about. Read. That thou mayest love the Lord thy God, uh -huh. and that thou mayest obey his voice, uh -huh. and that thou mayest cleave unto him. So when we obey his voice, when we cleave unto him, just like a father cleaves to it, just like a son would cleave to his father, 
His father go to work. As soon as the father walk through the door, what that son doing? Running to the door. That's the same way we're supposed to cleave to our God. I see you. I'm going I'm to get you. Read. For he is thy life. Uh-huh. For he is thy life. The most high God is our life. When we're not doing what he told us to do, we don't have no life. Even if you got all the money in the world, you don't have no life if you're not living your life according to the Bible. You're not keeping the commandments. Read. And the length of thy days. And he is the length of our days. And it goes beyond growing old in this life. No, he the length of our days, meaning that I'm going I'm to I'm keep it basic. Go ahead. That thou mayest dwell in the land uh -huh. which the Lord swear unto thy fathers. Read on. To Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. Nevertheless, we see here, when we see that it's pointed out clearly that the Most High God will curse us. And let's read Deuteronomy 28 and 15 again. Because if we don't do what he told us, if we don't do the things that he told us to do, that leads us into the curses. And that's what when Kanye said slavery was a choice. We didn't choose it in the sense of, hey, take me to slavery. But we chose it in the sense of we chose to break God's commandments, and that's what, and that's what caused us to be put, taken into slavery. Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Uh-huh, so he said, if you will not listen to the voice of the Lord your God. Listen, hearken, like I said earlier, just, it means to listen attentively. You're actually listening so that you can understand and do it. Read. To observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, uh -huh. that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Read the last part again. That all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So it clearly says that if you do not keep the commandments in this Bible, that all these curses will come upon you. So my question would be for a Christian is, why, where did you read that, the, that God said that he won't curse us? Because that, that clearly just, that just said it right there. If you don't keep the commandments, you're going to be cursed. What did you have, sis? He said, let his people go. Yeah. That's true. And that's what that's and that's what the and that's what the Bible goes into it, and we are His people. It's, it goes farther than American. It goes us as the Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. He gonna come deliver us if we keep in His commandments. What you got? To, what you... I'm, I'm trying to remember because I should have thought about that when they told me about that God don't curse. I should have thought about when I remember something that happened where somebody if they turned around they turned us off. What that was, was that? Uh, Lot's wife. That was Lot's wife. And what reason was that for? Because that was when uh, they delivered Lot out of Most High, delivered Lot out of Sodom and Gomorrah, and he destroyed right. Gomorrah, he Sodom and Gomorrah. So he destroyed. And she turned back, basically turning back, trying to go back. Mm -hmm. Like she missed it, and, and she get turned to salt. Was that was a curse, exactly. So when you read through the Bible, it's, it's yeah. he destroyed it's cities. Even with Noah, even with Noah, he destroyed the whole earth. Yeah. He flooded the earth. But God don't curse. That, that don't line up. Because when you read in Malachi, it says he changed not. God don't change. It's us that changed. Is it true? Is there, is, I heard, I would also hear somebody say God is a jealous God. Yeah. Okay. Yep. You got that? He's a, he's a jealous God. And what is he jealous about? We his people. He created us for him. But yet we find ourselves always in some other nation business. What about, what about the white man? What about the, uh, the, the Japanese man? What about this? What about that? No, I created you that you can keep my commandments and serve me. 
But we, over the course of history, that's what we do. We, we cleave to the other nations. But if we, even if we, if we come together, right? Uh huh. Like what, how we had Black Wall Street, all they do is destroy it. So this, that's, we don't have our army. So you know the key? The key to it is um, go to Zephaniah 2 and 1. Um, what else I want? You know so the, the key, you know I know what you're saying. In your head, like. Yeah. Wow. So read that first. The book of Zephaniah, chapter 2 and verse 1. Gather yourselves together. Uh-huh. Yea, gather together. O nation not desired. So who's not desired on this earth? And I'm answering your question. Who is not desired? Yeah, who is the nation that's not desired? United States. So when we move into a neighbor, let's say we, we let's say all of us, say about ten of us, we go and decide to move into we're gonna move into a neighborhood. Twenty, about ten, twenty of us. We move into a white neighborhood. What start happening? They start moving out. They start moving out. So what that shows us, we not desired. We are not a nation. We are a nation not desired. So read it again from the top. <clears throat> gather yourselves together. So it says, gather yourselves together. Read. Yea, gather together, O nation not desired. So we are a nation that's not desired. We have to gather together. So going back to your question about. Like uh, with the Black Wall Street, we we was together, and our communities were destroyed. What what, what one thing were we lacking? Because we was together, it was more than the army. We was together. We had businesses, we had banks, we had all of that. What one thing based on what we've been going over today? What was we lacking? Huh? Uh, dude, that's crazy. That's crazy. God. Now read, you said God and love. Read that in uh, John 14, 15. So the thing about it is, us gathering together, we can't just gather together. I, we gather together, I believe I'm Israel, you believe you're a Christian, you believe you're Muslim, you believe another brother moved, believe he's a Moor, another blo- brother believe he's GD. We ain't, we, we not gathering together. We not, go, we, it's gonna all, we gonna always bump heads. We have to gather together under this, even if we all gather together as Muslims, that's not the right thing because that's not who God created us to be. He didn't, he didn't make us Muslims. You don't read that in the Bible. Read. The book of John, chapter 14 and verse 15. If ye love me... So this is Christ. This is, this is the words in red. This is Christ speaking. He said, if you love me, read... Keep my commandments. Keep my commandments. What did Christ teach while he was walking the earth? Because a lot of people would say that his commandments are the first, is, is two commandments, love thy neighbor and love God. But what does that mean? What does it mean? How do I show love to my brother? I show love to my brother by not murdering him in the streets. I, I show love to my brother by not stealing from him. I show love to my brother by not committing adultery, by not taking his wife and going and laying with her. And and what am I doing by doing that? I'm keeping the commandments. Because now my eye is not evil towards my brother. That's how you love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and how you love your neighbor as yourself, by applying the commandments of God. But all too often, what we hear in, in, in the Christian churches is that God's laws are done away with. So if you say God's laws are done away with, automatically that translates in, into I could do whatever I want and ain't no consequences. Well, is that the reason why they always do what they want and they come in on Sunday and, and exactly. get asked for forgiveness and think it's all right? It's, that, that's exactly what it is. Right, and that's a phony apology. That's why. That's why. Uh, get that in. Um, is it Amos? I uh, move. Get away from me, your your sacrifices. Oh, Amos five twenty. It kind of. You know what really tripped out? It tripped out. You said that. It reminded me of the book of Eli. I, I really like the book of Eli. Uh huh. Because he was walking around 
with yep. nothing but the faith of God and yep. nothing but harm to him. And that's that movie, a lot of times what happened with a lot of these movies that I made, it's about us. Because with the, but Eli, he had the Bible, and the Bible was in Braille. He couldn't see. But as he was moving, couldn't nobody touch him. Nobody touch him. And, and that, that's why I like Denzel, because he only played certain roles. That, uh -huh. And they be educational, debaters. You know, it's always something right. to get your mind right. going in the right direction. Yep. yep. The book of Amos, chapter 5, and verse 20, 21. I hate, I despise your feast days, and I will not smell in your solemn assemblies. So this is this is going into what what we just talked about with Christianity. They do they do evil all throughout the week, but then on Sunday, oh God, forgive me. I'm about God. Da, 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 da. That's what this is. Read. Though ye day. offer me burnt one offerings day, yep. and your meat offerings, I will not accept them. So what what like today? The only difference is we're not sacrificing bulls and goats. So that's what they were doing. That's what the priest was doing. That's why the Most High God did away with the sacrifices. He said, he, God said, I hate your sacrifices because we wasn't doing it in sincerity. We was, we was uh, extorting people, stealing, murdering, and then going to do a sacrifice like, oh, God, forgive me. But our mind wasn't right because we, we had no intentions on changing. And that's exactly what goes on in Christianity. They put on a show as if they change, but because they're not keeping the commandments, there's no change. What is this? All right, I, I remember <coughs> my ex-girlfriend came and got me and she wanted me to go to church with her. I went to church with her. I'm sitting down, I'm looking around. I just don't feel it. The preacher is doing this thing, it's like entertaining for everybody else. Micah. But... I felt uncomfortable, and I felt like I shouldn't have been there. And then she told me, she was trying to push me to go up there to get baptized. And I'm like, nah, I, I'm about to go. I don't feel right when I go to churches. Uh -huh. Cause it's, I feel like I have a better relationship with God when I'm by myself. Give me that in um, those who, who Christ said, my sheep hear my voice, and another they would not follow. Would not follow. So that's the fact that you feel like that, that's biblical. Because you see through the fairy tale. Yeah. But this is, this is one of the reasons that may be. Read it. You got it? Mm -hmm. This <clears throat> is the book of John, chapter 10 and verse 27. My sheep hear my voice. Christ said, my sheep hear my voice. They hear my voice. When you think about a shepherd, the sheep is only going to follow that shepherd. They're not going to follow nobody else. Anybody else coming there to try to lead them anywhere? They're not going. And that, like, we are, this is, like, we got physical bodies, but we got a spirit. And it's the spirit in us that, that actually direct and move. Even though we, we, even though we in a mindset where we don't know who we are, we know what we're not following. Like, even, you know what I'm saying, I use myself as an example. I was in Christianity, and I was following it wholehearted but there was always that thought it was always something in the back of my mind like something ain't right something's not something ain't lining up but read that <clears throat> my sheep hear my voice I said my sheep hear my voice read and i know them and i know them christ know who's are his read and they follow me and they when his sheep follow him verse four and when he put it forth his own sheep he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, uh -huh. for they know his voice. Uh -huh. And a stranger, they, and a stranger will they not follow. That's what it is. You sat in there. This is strange. Like this ain't, nah, this ain't right. Yeah. That's your spirit bearing witness that something ain't right in here. You really, you really couldn't pinpoint why and what it was, but that's that's more than likely why. For this cause here, with I don't I don't know if you ever heard this information that we bringing out there. You are Israelite, but yeah. this is what this is what is the truth, because this is what the Bible is talking about from Genesis to the old to the Revelation. This Bible is about the Israelites. It's not the New Testament comes and now the doors of salvation are open to everybody. No, that's not what it is. It's Christ. Christ came Matthew one and twenty one. Christ came 
only for the nation of Israel because the nation of Israel is the nation that was given God's commandments. So when Christ came, he came to redeem. How can you redeem a people that was never under the same covenant? <clears throat> Read that. I'm the book of Matthew, chapter 1, verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son. So this is talking about Mary. It says she's going to bring forth a son. Read. And thou shalt call his name Jesus. Uh -huh. For he shall save his people. So it said he shall save his people. What nation was Jesus Christ a, pro a part of? Jerusalem. Jerusalem or Israel. So if he's saying he's going to save his people, who he come to save? Exactly. He, he came, you said, you said the Hebrews. He came to save the Jews. He came to save the Israelites because that's who he came. That's the nation that he came from. So it, it, and it's, the Bible is very specific. He said, read it again. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people. So he shall save his people. Where did you get all nations from that? You don't. Because when you look at the, when you, when you examine the Old Testament, you see Israel. The Old Testament is all about Israel. So in, in the New Testament, Christ come on the scene and says he's going to save his people from their sins. Because Israel is the nation that went off into idolatry, into, into all types of foolishness. Uh, was that it? From their sins. From their sins. Read. Now jump up to uh, chapter 2, and I think it's 6. Verse 6. And thou, Bethlehem, and the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah? Uh -huh. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people, Israel. There it goes again. It said, out of, read it again. And thou, Bethlehem, and the land of Judah, are not the least among the princes of Judah. Uh -huh. For out of thee shall come a governor. So out of thee shall come a governor, talking about Christ. Read. That shall rule my people. That shall rule my people. This is God talking. He's, this is very specific and possessive. He said he's going to rule my people. Read. Israel. Israel. That's not all nations. The Bible is very clear. So one more, you know, let's go back to, circle back and go to Deuteronomy 28 and 68. Go to the slide. So the main, like I said, the main purpose of it, we, we have a very, we have a long presentation. We did go over some things, but the main purpose of this presentation is black history in the Bible. We're showing how our history is in the Bible, which, which, which connects with us, showing that we are the Israelites. We are the people of the book. Read that real quick. And then we're going back to the curses. We're going back to the curses where we read where Moses said, it shall come to pass that if you will not keep, my, keep the commandments of God, that curses will come upon you. This is another one of those curses. Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. Uh-huh. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So it says the Lord shall bring you into Egypt again. So it's common. You got the movie Prince of Egypt that the Israelites were in slavery in Egypt, right? So now God is saying, I'm going to bring you into slavery again. Read. Into Egypt again, read, which is slavery or bondage. Read. With ships. With ships. If you know any ar archaeological facts, you don't need a ship to go to, uh, from Jerusalem to Egypt. So what happened to us? How did the so-called black man get over here to America? So, so, so the thing about it is the Israelites are the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Mm -hmm. The Hispanics and the Native Americans were already here, but the blacks were not. We were scattered throughout Africa. So when they came over to the west coast of Africa, they knew that they were coming and getting Israelites off the west coast of Africa and bringing them over here. You even have slave documents of our names that show what our name. We knew who we were when they brought us over here. So we came over here on ships. And then to further that, the natives that was already here, you know, they sent them on slave ships to Spain and Europe. 
when they came over here. And they, 1492, it's a history book, 1492 started the transatlantic slave trade. Not when they came and got us off the shores of Africa. So that's what connects the dot of, we was already here. Yeah, we were. But it was, it was, our, it was two, and it's a whole lot we had to go through, but it's two kingdoms. We were split into two kingdoms, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. Majority of the northern kingdom was over here. Majority of the southern kingdom was still in the land and scattered throughout Africa. So when they came and got us on the slave ships and brought us over here, they was coming to get the southern kingdom and bringing us over here. So that's this. And then what further expounds this, when you read in Exodus chapter 14 and 13, it says that we would never see the land of Egypt again. So that's how we know that it's not talking about us going into that physical land mass of Egypt. It's talking about our slavery here in America. Read. Again, but with ships, by the way whereof I spake unto thee. Go to the next slide. So them transatlantic cargo slave ships, that was Bible prophecy. The conquistadors, they, just didn't, they didn't just come up with an idea like, you know what? Let's start a business. We're going to go get some slaves and take them over to America, take them to Europe. It's, no, it was Bible prophecy. It was, it was destined to happen because we broke God's commandments. Go to the next slide. Read on. Thou shalt see it no more again. Meaning, read it, read it all, all together. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Uh -huh. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. So this is, that's going, to that part where he said, thou shalt see it no more again, that's going back to where he told us in Exodus 14 and 13 that we would no longer see that Pharaoh again. We would no longer see that Egypt. We would never go back into slavery in the land of Egypt. But now he's saying, when he said he's sending us in Egypt again on ships, he's talking about the slavery here. These, look at these, and I don't know if y'all can see the detail, but they had us packed in the bottom of these ships like sardines. That's Bible prophecy. That wasn't a, a man's uh, creative mind. It was Bible prophecy. Read. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women. And when we got off those slave ships, what happened? We were sold on an auction block. That's Bible prophecy. Next slide, uh, read on. And no man shall buy you. That no man shall buy you is an old Quaker term meaning no man shall redeem you. We won't be redeemed. That's why we're still here. We're waiting on Christ to come back and deliver us out of this captivity. What is the nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. 